Greetings humans. Today on Exploring Limitations, I'm going to show you five steps to recording and producing drums on this, a micro cassette recorder. Here we go. I've been on the road recently, blah, 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 blah. And luckily for me, they hired an amazing drummer slash percussionist named Noah Hadlin. Y'all know how much I love drummers and drums. Look at all that stuff. So, of course, I brought this a Panasonic micro cassette recorder, often referred to as a dictaphone. My intention was to record Noah and turn those recordings into a new track, a new piece of music. If you're a person of any age getting into the idea of recording tape or using analog gear for the first time, I cannot recommend these enough. There's just so much vibe that you can capture with one of these little things, and they are cheap prices. 14. But today, I'm gonna give you some tips or steps for producing groovy drums with one of these. So let's get into it. Tip or step one. Placement, placement, placement. When recording your drummer friend, or your drummer enemy, find a good spot on the kit for the balance that you desire. Generally, this is a good starting place. You can see that I'm kind of floating right above the kick drum, pointing at the snare. It's a very good place to start for a well-balanced kit. But here's where you need to trust your ears and your instincts. Move it around. Test out different places. Get closer to the snare. Get close to the kick drum. Try it far away. Stick it on the floor underneath the drummer's butt. I mean, I don't care. Whatever, the point is, is that you should experiment with the darn thing. Here's a quick sound example of where we ended up in terms of placement and balance. And that brings us to tip or step two. I recommend thinking ahead and utilizing the fact that a lot of these have two speeds, a high speed and a low speed. Try starting at the faster speed and then slowing down the recorded tape like this. Keep the change, you filthy animal. Keep the change, you filthy animal. Again, you can use this to your advantage. Noah and I picked a tempo around 90 beats per minute. Once we got some takes in that groove at that tempo, I asked him to do it in double speed. Now, you can take that sped up beat and play it at half speed. And obviously when you slow the tape down, things get pitched down as well. Again, your cassette player will never be as perfectly accurate as a digital recorder. Which brings me to tip or step number three. A fun little trick about little tape machines is that you can utilize the speed up or slow down effect while the music is happening. Check out some of my favorite examples. Yes, your DAW can do this, but is it fun? Is it? Now let's move on to tip or step number four. Here's where we start to produce and make music. A lot of you out there watching this have probably utilized samples, drum samples in your life. You can create your own drum samples. You can create your own drum loops. Record your friend, your drummer friend, or your drummer enemy. Have them play for a good chunk of time. And now when you bring that into your DAW, you can find a bar or two bars where you really like what happened and slice that up, loop it. Make that a foundational part of a track or make it a foundational part of a section, a musical section. But just because we're recording drums on micro cassette doesn't mean we can't add more drums later or drum machines or some kick drum or something fun. But the point is right now is having fun with your drummer friend or drummer enemy. Tip or step number five. Have fun. Look at all this fun stuff that Noah had lying there. You bet you're behind that I wanted to capture some of those fun percussion instruments. Since my little zoom camera caught the real live audio that day, I want you to hear the difference between the original sound of that percussion instrument and how it sounds on cassette, or and maybe how it sounds on cassette slowed down. Tubular bells.
Tam Tam. Bass drum. Glockenspiel. Talking drum. Some of these no longer even make sense the way they sound on micro cassette. <laughs> but now you can chop these up and you can loop those as well. You can start to build a composition or an arrangement. Also, you can apply previous techniques like speeding up or slowing down. Is that the start of an arrangement I hear? Hey, it's me from the future or present. I'm gonna help give you context and play the end of this produced track. And I want you to listen and let me know if you recognize any of the sounds that you've heard so far. Otherwise, we'll see you around YouTube lands and peace and be good to each other, please.